Hey guys, this is James from Isotropic, and quickly before we get into the video, I just want to let you know that we launched a Facebook group, which is going to be the first link in the description. Feel free to hop in there if you want to chat about WordPress with us. And this video is going to be talking about how to incorporate Locomotive Scroll into a website. In this example, we're going to be using Oxygen Builder and WordPress together. But the concepts outlined here can be used on any CMS, any website uh, that you are trying to implement this cool library on. What is Locomotive Scroll? So this is a library that enables smooth scrolling and parallax. And by combining these two effects together, you can make for a very unique interactive website. And here is an example of kind of how this looks. And this is the GitHub page, which I will link to in the description. And you can just see there's a lot of smooth scrolling, uh, very inertia based and then movement uh, anywhere you want with parallax effects. You can also see that it replaces the scrolling system uh, from the browser with its own and this is done by creating uh, something that's a hundred percent high and then implementing its own scrolling mechanism uh, onto that. So it replaces the uh, browser scrolling effect. Um, some people don't like that. It's called scroll jacking. Some people are fine with it. I think this is a perfect uh, happy medium of creating something very unique but also not uh, hindering the user experience. So that's what this library is. That's kind of what it looks like. Let's look at how to add it to a website. So there are two parts of this library. You have a CSS file and a JavaScript file. You can incorporate that by hosting it yourself, using a CDN version, anything in between that. Uh, for development and uh, even going live, I would probably recommend going and incorporating the CSS into the header of your site and the JavaScript into the footer of your site by including a script and link tag uh, and then connecting that to one of the CDNs. Um, with that being said, let's take a look at how this is added to a WordPress site. We're using a tool called Advanced Scripts. You can see that we have our CSS, our JavaScript, and our or our initializer. Um, so in this example, I've just copied and pasted everything from the GitHub. Uh, you can see if you go to dist, within there you can get your minified versions of uh, the libraries if this wants to load. Here you can see the locomotive scroll.min.css and locomotive scroll.min.js. Uh, and you can just take and copy and paste them into your site. You can also go the CDN route, uh, anything like that. Um, so that's how you add it to the site. And you can see that um, if my tabs work here, you can see that. Uh, it's, it's just added to the site like so. The one thing to note here is how this is initialized. So by using a script manager, we can initialize it on various pages, ranges of pages, uh, and stuff like that. Um, this is just globally initializing the whole script on every page on the site. If that's something that you want to do, uh, that's how you would do it. Um, let's take a look at this code, and then let's take a look at how to structure the site once we've installed it on uh, onto the site. So first, this is how we initialize it. Very simple, copied and pasted from the GitHub. Uh, you can see that it has a query selector of an attribute, uh, and then we've also just turned smooth scrolling on. If you go over to the GitHub, you'll be able to see a bunch of um, different options you can set in the documentation, but let's hop here here are your options, um, but I've only chosen to initialize the smooth scroll and then keep everything else as its default form. So that's the actual installation of it. Um, now we need to structure the actual HTML of our site to be compatible with this library. And it's relatively simple, especially if you build with Oxygen. Um, and this is kind of how you do it. And first I'll explain it and then I'll show you it. Um, in this example, we have a template that is adding the header and the footer to an inner content block, uh, and that is globally applied as a catch-all template to all of the pages. We're using this template to create the structure that Locomotive needs to initialize that scrolling effect, and I'll show you what I mean here. So first, I'm going to load this, and as this, come on, 
as this loads, I'm going to show you the actual structure that I'm trying to tell you about. All right, so here's the HTML structure of the site. Let's see if I can find it. And you'll see that we're using a bunch of data attributes to apply all of these effects. First, you have a div that surrounds all content on the site. Um, this includes the headers, the footers, and everything in between. Uh, here, the attribute is data scroll container, and that is exactly what it means. It's just the container of everything that's going to be scrolling on the website. Um, each individual section should have a data scroll section attribute applied to them, and then the things that are actually going to move and have parallax effects have the data scroll attribute. You can set data scroll speed and data scroll delay, as well as a bunch of other things. We just uh, use the speed and the delay. Um, so now that this is loaded, this is how we do it on an Oxygen site. We wrap all content within the body within a div. Um, this is just your standard div element, and then we throw our header, uh, inner content, and footer in, into all of that. Um, so the main thing is that this is just wrapping all the content that's going to scroll on the website. We've also changed the tag to main from div. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like on the front end a bit later. And then the final thing we do is add the attribute data scroll container. Uh, and that's that. So that's the structure of the page. On the front end, here's what this looks like. You can see that we have our main element here. Uh, it's just tagged as main, and it has the data scroll container within it. Then if we break it down a little bit more, you can see that all of the inner content all of the inner content sections have data scroll section applied to them and then they also have styling which is dynamically applied by the library which changes uh, as we scroll up and down the page so that's what this is this is how you know that the library is installed if it says has scroll in it uh, and a bunch of other things then you're good to go and you'll see that things change as we scroll and that's how the li how the library works so um, Let's take a look again at this site just for another um, another example of what that code structure looks like, and then that will be our video. So you can see, uh, just like in the other site, you have these different things added, and they've actually set it to be changed. Uh, and then you can see within the body, there's a div, and the data scroll container attribute is present. Um, so that's how you know everything's working and above board. Okay, so quickly recapping this, um, we include the CSS, JavaScript, and then initialize it. I like using a script manager because I can set conditions with advanced scripts. So if all of these are true, then the library gets initialized. And we can do that. We can say if a page is something, if a, w this is this is why I like advanced scripts. So we've included all of the code necessary. I would probably do this with um, a CDN. So you can do that in advanced scripts by just setting the type of content. So we, we just swapped over to the CSS. You can set it to load from URL and just paste in the link to the CDN version. Uh, from there, we structure our site in a way where a main div is surrounding all the content and it has the data scroll container attribute applied to it and uh, save everything and you're good to go. So that's how you apply locomotive scroll. If you need a written documentation, we did an article on it. If you need more uh, a more detailed tutorial on how to do specific effects with it, that's also linked below. Hopefully this was a helpful video for you. Uh, if it was, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Uh, and until the next video, I won't see you. In the next video, I will.